There are places on this earth where people live out their entire lives under the threat of one of nature's most destructive powers. We can feel how thin the divide is between the civilization we have built on the shell of this planet and the rolling, rumbling forces underneath. So why aren't they constantly running for their lives? To find out why, I've come to southern Italy, the heartland of volcanic activity in Europe, where I'll visit four of the country's most active and dangerous volcanoes. I want to understand the explosive inner workings of volcanoes. So I'm beginning in Sicily with the mighty Mount Etna. Before we get to Mount Etna, I thought I'd briefly explain how volcanoes work. To do that, I shall use the Italian delicacy of a bombalone. This is a bombaloni. And I know what you're thinking. Dar, that's a donut. How can a donut possibly have the complex internal structure of planet Earth? But no, 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 this is a bombaloni. And the baker assured us that inside here is an exact replica of what's going on inside the planet, including a luscious chocolate filling that represents pockets of hot, super hot molten rock called magma. And then there's the important part, the crust. The crust is the bit we live on. And the magma and the gases with it want to push their way up through the crust. So you've got this hard shell and then this liquid underneath that pressure builds and builds and builds until eventually it bursts through and you get a delicious volcano. I mean, that really is underplaying the drama of an actual volcano. But you get the idea. Etna is a force that demands to be understood. So I'm meeting Emanuela De Beni, a scientist from Italy's Institute for Volcano Monitoring. Why would this all happen here, in this part of Italy? Etna is built in a very complex setting. We are in a collision area between two plates. Earth's crust is divided into seven major plates. Giant slabs of rock that fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. Southern Italy is close to a boundary where two of these plates collide. We have two plates that are going one against the other one, but one is underneath the other and uh, the crust is going down. But they aren't simply bumping into each other the African plate is being forced beneath the Eurasian plate. High temperatures below the crust cause the rock to melt into magma. As it does so, it expands, and this exerts enormous pressure on the solid rock above. So we have a sort of balance between the magma that are in deep and the pressure of the mountain above. Eventually, the pressure becomes too much for the weight and integrity of the rock. Magma forces its way to the surface, and you have a volcanic eruption. We have to image Etna like a bottle of champagne. So we've got force pushing down, we've got the gas and the magma building up. At some point, their pressure is too big, and it pops the cork. Exactly. During my visit to Etna, the mountain lay quiet. To really understand the power of volcanoes, I want to see an eruption firsthand. So I'm leaving Sicily by boat and heading north across the Tyrrhenian Sea to the island of Stromboli. This is Stromboli. The whole island is one towering volcano in the throes of a violent eruption. And I am here to see it for myself. And there's Stromboli. Exactly. It's not yet dark enough to see the glowing lava, but the sounds of the eruptions are impossible to ignore. That was the loudest one we've had so far. Why is it going off so regularly? There's some kind of open window into the magma chamber beneath it. It constantly seems to be open enough for it to be degassing. Magma contains dissolved gas, a bit like a bottle of fizzy drink. As magma rises, the pressure drops. The gas expands, escapes the magma, and drives the explosive power of the eruption. It's like the floorboards being lifted up, and you see what's going on underneath the planet. 
and there's a direct line from that point down to a massive reservoir of magma which is forcing its way up and exploding out. Look at that. Throughout history, humans have dared to build cities at the foot of volcanoes. I'm in Naples, where over a million people live in the shadow of Mount Vesuvius. This is the first time I've ever been nervous about falling into a mountain. At 450 meters across and 300 meters deep, this crater is big enough to fit St. Paul's Cathedral several times over. You're left in no doubt about the amount of force that would be required to essentially violently excavate the middle of the mountain through the top. And then you're left with that, that sheer wall that shows all the different layers of lava flows and ash and sediment left by previous eruptions. I'm in Italy, uncovering the deadly power of volcanoes. Now I'm visiting the most dangerous of them all, a supervolcano hidden beneath a city, capable of devastation on an unimaginable scale. I've been brought by the INGV, who are the volcanic experts here, to a part of the city where they can show me actually the effect of Campi Flegre, the supervolcano, which sits underneath so many people's homes. Jesus, that is bizarre. This pit of angry, boiling mud is the Pisciarelli Fumaro. It's an opening in the very crust of the earth, allowing highly pressurized gas to escape from the supervolcano below. This is the reality of living on top of a supervolcano. Beneath every active volcano lies a magma chamber, a vast reservoir of molten rock that feeds eruptions through a vertical passage called a conduit. This one is fueling Vesuvius. The magma chamber under Camper Flegley how does that compare to the one under Vesuvius? Is it larger? Well, I mean, we don't know exactly the extension, but depending on the maturity of the chamber, it can be much bigger than the one fitted at the Vesuvius. Campi Flegre's magma chamber is thought to be 100 times bigger than Vesuvius's. And if that wasn't terrifying enough, its chamber doesn't have just one conduit, but many, making the location of an eruption almost impossible to predict. So if it happened, if there is an eruption, it could pop up anywhere within this yes. caldera, within this area here. We are working to try to understand which, where is the maximum probability, the, the more likely area where the magma can come out. Because the gases escape from the magma below, analysing them provides vital clues to the volcano's activity. In the 10 years, the amount of gas increased almost fivefold. Is that one of the signs that maybe the volcano is becoming more active? For sure. If eruption is imminent, is evacuation the only option? I mean, we are powerless, really, when the volcano properly erupts. Yeah, we can study, we can monitor, but at the end, it's the nature that is in charge. 